Grace, mercy, and peace be, be yours from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Please be seated. This last week, many of us woke up on Monday hearing about the horrific tragedy uh, of the mass shooting that happened in Las Vegas the night before. The images and, and the pictures uh, were, were flooding our, our hearts and our minds as we saw a, a lone gunman terrorize and kill concert goers. And even while the bullets rained down, ordinary people did ordinary things. And the extraordinary happened. Jonathan Smith was one of these ordinary people. He was attending the concert that day, and just when the bullets began to fly, he simply got people to safety. He pulled, dragged, carried, guided them out of harm's way, saving many lives. But in the process, he himself took two bullets. Tom McGrath was also there, an off-duty police officer, and he pulled Jonathan to safety. And with his ordinary fingers, he stopped the bleeding from those bullet wounds. Others, with their ordinary hands, held the hands of those that were dying. And ordinary doctors, nurses, EMTs, and other first responders did their jobs. And through Jonathan and Tom and many others doing ordinary acts, extraordinary things happened. People were dragged to safety. Jonathan's life and many other lives were saved. Healing took place. And even those who died, they didn't die alone. Ordinary actions led to extraordinary results. As Christians, we shouldn't be surprised by this. This is how our God operates, too. See, God does extraordinary things, but through ordinary means. In our Old Testament reading that, that Judy Krekus read, one of our Lutheran Women Missionary League ladies, uh, as they're serving in worship all weekend, uh, she read about, uh, in our Old Testament reading, how God created everything that there was. And he did that using just the power of his word. But when it came time for the, the crowning point of his achievement, humankind, God gets down in the dirt. He gets his hands dirty. And with ordinary dirt, he fashions Adam. And with breath, ordinary air and spirit, he breathes life into Adam. And he does the same thing with Eve through an ordinary rib taken from Adam. He fashions Eve, the first woman, and breathes life into her as well. Through the ordinary things of, of bone and dirt, God does the extraordinary of creating humankind. Through an ordinary prisoner rotting away in an Egyptian jail named Joseph, God used to save Egypt in the known world of the time from a severe famine. This included saving the chosen family. In an ordinary basket, a baby was placed so it could be saved from death. And God directed that ordinary basket to a daughter of Pharaoh. And that baby would later grow up to become Moses, the one who would save God's people from slavery in Egypt. An ordinary shepherd boy, David, the youngest of his brothers, just an ordinary kid, becomes one of Israel's greatest king. Through ordinary water, the, the Jordan River, 
a muddy little creek by comparison to the Tigris or Euphrates or even the Merrimack used to, to heal Naaman of leprosy through his prophet Elisha. God does extraordinary things through ordinary things like dirt and water and people. In Jesus' life, we also see God do amazing things through just the plain and the ordinary. Jesus is born in a humble way. And he's placed in an ordinary feed trough for animals, a manger. His first miracle, Jesus turns ordinary water into the most fabulous wine. And through dirt again. Mixed with his own ordinary saliva, Jesus makes mud. He rubs it on the blind man's eyes and he goes and washes in an ordinary pool and he can see through ordinary words given as a command, a soldier's servant is healed and through an ordinary lunch, 5,000, more than 5,000 people are fed at one time. And, on an, and, and with ordinary wood fashioned into a cross, attached to it by ordinary nails, and with ordinary thorns circled into a crown upon his head, Jesus dies and pays the price for your sins and mine. God does extraordinary things through ordinary means. But it's not just in history that, this, that God acts this way. He still operates through ordinary means for you and me today. In the waters of baptism, God takes simple water, ordinary water, and when it's combined with God's word, he does the extraordinary. He gives faith and forgiveness and makes you part of his family, the church. And through ordinary words spoken by ordinary men, God gives you his forgiveness in the words of absolution. And on an ordinary table, with ordinary bread and wine, God gives you his very son, the body and blood of Jesus, for your forgiveness, for, for life and salvation, for strength to live a life following him. He gives you his very presence to know that you are not alone. And in an ordinary building, made from ordinary building supplies, we gather together to receive God's gifts. To, to receive the encouragement from our fellow believers. We gather together in this ordinary place to, to encourage others as well. We have a responsibility to those that we worship with. And in this ordinary place, God gives us his extraordinary gifts. God does extraordinary things through ordinary means. As Lutheran Christians, we embrace the ordinary. Because we know that it was into the ordinary, into the everyday things of life that Christ entered for us. He became an ordinary human being. He became like us. And his life was not simply just a highlight reel of mountaintop experiences. Jesus lived in the everyday in the ordinary, in the valleys, Jesus lived for you and me. It was in these valleys that Jesus taught people.
people about the coming kingdom of God. And it's where he listened to them and spoke with them and cared about them. And he healed ordinary diseases. God embraces and uses the ordinary. And as he does, extraordinary things happen. He heals. He creates faith. And people are given hope. Yes, as Lutheran Christians, we embrace the ordinary. We know that in our lives, it, it's more than just mountaintop experiences. We know that life is lived in the valleys, in the ordinary, in the everyday. But we also know that it's through these ordinary things that we also know it's through ordinary people like you and me that God still does amazing things. The wonderful thing about the Christian life is that God still does the extraordinary through the ordinary, through you and me. You see, as you change your baby's diaper, as you listen attentively to your spouse, when you care for an aging parent, as you write get well or sympathy cards, as you visit people in the nursing home or the hospital, when you read to your kids, as you faithfully do your jobs, as you sit with the loved one who is dying, reminding them of God's love and your love, when you pray with your family, when you introduce yourself to someone new at church so that they can just know they're loved and welcomed here, when you invite someone to go to coffee with you or, or lunch to get to know them better and support them, when you call the person you haven't seen in church in a while or that person that you know is struggling with something in their life, when you make quilts with ordinary fabric and thread to go to those in need or to sell to support missions, when you put yourself in harm's way to help someone in need, through all of these ordinary, everyday actions, God does extraordinary things. Through these everyday things, people in your lives know and see and experience the love of God. They know they have hope. And they know that they're not alone. As we faithfully follow Christ, we embrace the ordinary. It's not only how we live in the everyday and the ordinary, but it's how he strengthens and feeds you as well. See, through ordinary worship, week in and week out, sitting in ordinary pews, singing ordinary songs, hearing ordinary words, through ordinary bread and wine. God works, and he strengthens your faith and your life. Sometimes we forget this, and we think that because, just because something is ordinary, that makes it somehow unimportant. But this is how God works. He always does the extraordinary through ordinary means. And because of this reality, I want to challenge you this morning. Embrace the ordinary. I want to give you a, a specific challenge. So I, I'd invite you to take out those connection cards that you filled out earlier, the white ones for the adults, the yellow ones for the kids. My challenge for you this morning is don't miss ordinary worship. I challenge you to be here for the next four weeks in a row, week in and week out. And in the ordinary, don't miss the extraordinary things that God gives you in this way. I know that there are other things that, that are pulls on your life. 
extraordinarily busy schedules, whether it's kids' sports or travel or work, but don't let those good things rob you from receiving the best thing of God's gifts in this ordinary way. To accept this challenge, simply write your, sign your name on the back of that card this morning and see how through ordinary means God does extraordinary things. Jonathan Smith, the man who took those two bullets, saving others during the Las Vegas shooting, he said this, I'm not a hero. I'm far from a hero. I think I just did what anybody would do. Did you catch that? He said he was just doing what anyone would do. He was doing the ordinary. But because he did, the extraordinary happened. Lives were saved. In the same way, God, through ordinary things, does amazing things in your life. He saves you. He empowers you so that you can go out and do ordinary things in his name. And as you do, the extraordinary happens. People know and see and experience the love of Jesus Christ. They're given hope because of Christ. And they know that they are not alone. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding, may it guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.